Hi, welcome to Julie's Place. I'm Julie Goodwin and what I'd love to do is bake an Easter roast. I don't know about you, but I'm a little bit sad that I can't have all my family together for the big Easter roast that I normally do, but I don't think there's any reason not to cook it. Those of us at home can enjoy it. We can share the rest with our neighbours or, you know, I mean, we could eat it all ourselves and just spend the next two days on the couch, which is often how Easter rolls. So what I'm gonna make for you is a, a traditional lamb roast. It's the way my mum made it. It's the way my nan made it. Uh, I'll show you how to make gravy from scratch and some really good crispy potatoes and a few little sides and accompaniments. So we're gonna do the whole kit and caboodle here for an Easter lamb roast. So to prepare the lamb, I'm just gonna use some garlic and rosemary and lemon. So with the garlic, just peel it and you don't wanna chop it. You're just gonna cut it into nice sort of sticks that you can poke into holes into the lamb roast. I'm just going to cut this rosemary. This is out of my garden. It's, it's so beautiful. But if you don't grow it, you can always get it from the supermarket. But just cut it into about two or three centimetre lengths. All right, so you've got your garlic and your rosemary here. We're going to put it into the leg of lamb. So this is an ordinary leg of lamb. It's not boned. It's not rolled. It's the cheapest way to buy lamb. Cook it on the bone. It tastes delicious. And you can carve it off easily. But first I'm going to stab it. So I want to make incisions into the lamb that I can poke the garlic and rosemary into. And what happens is those flavours get right into the flesh so that when you're eating it, it tastes really delicious. And then you're going to get these lovely wedges of garlic and just tuck them into the incisions you've made into the lamb. So now I'm just tucking in these little sprigs of rosemary. So they go down there into those incisions with the garlic and they're going to flavour the meat as well. Back in my nan's day, they grew all their herbs and all their vegetables and mint used to grow out of a crack in the concrete footpath and uh, spinach, they ate a lot of that silver beet that was uh, massive veggie patches of that. But there were always the herbs that you needed to make food delicious, just growing there in the backyard. They're not hard to grow, so I'd recommend it, you know, even if you don't have much of a yard, you can grow it in a little patch of dirt, you can grow them in pots or even up a wall if you don't have space in your garden. you just got to look after them. They want a little bit of water and talk to them once or twice a day. That helps. So I've stuffed it all with rosemary and garlic and then this is a very, very simple, straightforward lamb roast. So all I'm going to do is drizzle on a little bit of olive oil Use the good stuff, Australian olive oil please, extra virgin. Some sea salt flakes, grind onto it a little bit of pepper. And then just a little bit of lemon zest makes it really tasty. And that is ready to go into a fairly moderate oven, about 180 degrees or 160 if you've got a good strong fan forced oven. Next we're gonna do the crispy roast potatoes. Now, I don't know about your family, but in my family, this is the most favourite part of the baked dinner. So I have to make way more than a normal person would. Because <laughs> my, well, my kids mainly. So the kind of potatoes I like to use for crispy roast potatoes are sabago, like your floury potatoes. So dirty sabagos, dirty potatoes mainly, Dutch cream, uh, that kind of thing. Kips of potatoes work nicely. But if you're going to use white, waxy potatoes, they don't crisp up so nicely in the oven. So they're good as jacket potatoes, which are also really nice with a lamb roast. We're going to peel enough potatoes for everybody. And I would say, it's hard for me to say what's normal, but I would say one to one and a half of these per hungry person, or if you live in my house, two or three per person because, yeah, these will cut up into about quarters and they'll make nice little crispy roast potato quarters but, um, yeah, if you live in my house, they can eat them all day and all night. And as I say, this could be quite a big roast for your family but it makes beautiful bubble and squeak if you just put it all into a fry pan the next morning with the gravy, delicious. Or it also freezes really nicely as a meal. So you can pop it all into a container, put it in the freezer, and one night when you don't feel like cooking, get yourself out a lamb roast. So what I'm gonna do is cut them into pieces and boil them in hot salty water until they become a bit soft around the edges. And that's what's gonna make them beautiful and crispy when I put them into the oven. 
The most important thing, I guess, at this stage is to try and cut them into similar sizes to each other, even though potatoes come in different sizes. So I'd look at these and say, well, this one I'll cut into half and then half again. So those are the sizes. I guess this one's bigger, so I might go, I might chop the end off that and then go half and half again. And then we've got a similar size and thickness of potato. And again, so what you're looking for is a similar thickness through the potato so it cooks at about the same time and doesn't burn on the outside. I'm just going to show you a few very simple sides that can go with your roast that make it just a little bit more special than your normal Sunday deal. So we're going to do some sesame honey carrots. We'll do some lovely baked orange veggies, so sweet potato and pumpkin. And we'll have some lovely buttered greens to go with it at the end. Very simple, very delicious. And I'm pretty sure your name would approve. So for the carrots, a little bit of oil, a little bit of butter, a good drizzle of honey, some sesame seeds, ground pepper, a little bit of salt, and just bake them until they're nice and soft. So I've cooked the potatoes until they're cooked through and they're starting to get a little rough edge on them. You don't want it to be too soft or they'll fall apart, but what this does is gives you that lovely sort of crispy crust on your roast potato. I think the roast is ready. I think it's time to take it out of the oven and give it a check. So we're looking for about an hour and a quarter, an hour and a half for a medium, nice pink lamb. Uh, for one this size, I've taken it out on the early side, about an hour and a quarter. And what I'm gonna do is just stab it with a skewer down to the bone. And if it comes out rushing out with red, then you know that it's undercooked. If it just trickles out a really clear fluid, then it's pretty well done. Uh, but if it comes out with just a little bit of pink, then what you're looking at is a nice medium roast. So let's stab. There we go. Just the tiniest bit of nice pink juices flowing out from there. And I think that's gonna be a lovely cooked lamb roast. This is my favourite bit of the roast. I think it's pretty much my whole family's favourite bit of the roast. And it's the gravy that you get. The original, authentic gravy out of the pan juices from what you've cooked in the oven. So this is the way my mother-in-law, Mick's mum, used to make this. Still in the pan that the roast was in, over the stove top, and everyone kind of took turns to stand in and stir it. So all you need for this is the pan juices from your roast, Back in depression era days, when my nan was doing it, you'd use water, but I'm gonna use stock today because that enriches the flavor a little bit. Um, I use beef stock for a red meat, and I use chicken stock for a white meat like pork. Okay, so first, before I put the stock in, what I have in the pan is beautiful pan juices and oil that have come out of that roast. I'm just gonna sprinkle some flour around into the pan and what we're going to make here is called a roux, R-O-U-X, roux, which is fat and flour together. And you're just going to stir that together with a spatula. Make sure you get all those yummy little brown bits off the bottom. All that tasty stuff. And you're looking for it to start sort of frothing up like that. And then you're just going to start to add the stock, a little tiny bit at a time. If you add too much, you'll end up with lumps in your gravy, but if you add in about a quarter of a cup at a time, you end up with a beautiful, smooth gravy because the flour cooks, and this becomes a little bit of a dough, like a doughy substance. And once it comes together like that, you add in a little bit more. Stir it round. This bit of the roast is a bit of an act of patience. You stand and stir, but standing and stirring, I think, is one of my favourite parts of cooking. You just get to think about who you're cooking for, what you're celebrating, how yummy it's going to taste. And it's just a process. It's one that you can't rush. I think these days we all need a few processes that we can't rush. So see that all combining? comes together in this beautiful 
rich doughy mixture and we add in another splash. Now, of course, this is a really basic gravy. If you wanted to, you could have roasted your lamb with some onions and some rosemary leaves. You could have splashed in some red wine into this. Uh, you can put in any kind of herb or aromatic that you like. What I'm showing you here is the kind of gravy that my mum used to make, which was not added to in any way. So I think it's best to start with the basics and get fancy as you get confident. Believe me, no one's going to complain about this gravy. For the pumpkin, I like to use a butternut pumpkin, also a grey or blue, it's also called pumpkin. Those are really nice for roasting. Jap pumpkin has a beautiful flavour, but I, actually, I think it's a little bit watery just to roast all by itself like this. So those are my two favourites, the butternut or the grey or, or Jap pumpkin. Um, you know, I'm obviously, once again, I'm cooking more than you're going to need if you've only got four people or so, but uh, leftover pumpkin is just as good as leftover lamb or anything else. You can mash it up with some feta and use it as a dip or stir fry it with your rest of your leftover roast and call it bubble and squeak for breakfast in the morning. And I'm going to roast the sweet potato as well. Quite often, like at Christmas time, for example, I usually make a sweet potato puree on the stove top. And the reason I do that is because real estate in the oven is at an absolute premium. But for Easter, and particularly this Easter, where we may not be having a crowd of 20 around for lunch, um, you can fit all this in the oven and it's beautiful roasted as well. Just like the potatoes, the idea is to have things at roughly the same size as each other so that they cook at about the same time as each other. Onto a tray. So a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of sea salt, a bit of pepper, and I'm going to put over some nutmeg and that gives it a beautiful sort of richness and sweetness. If you don't have nutmeg, you can use cinnamon or really anything at all. Just salt and pepper's fine too. They're very nice veggies on their own. All right, so a bit of nutmeg, salt and pepper. I'm going to put those into the oven. About halfway through cooking, when they're nice and golden on the bottom, I'm going to flip them over so they get nice and golden on the other side. They're going to be about half an hour, 40 minutes, it depends on your oven and how big you've cut them. And once they're done and golden, they're ready to serve. Okay, so my lamb's resting. I've got sweet potato and pumpkin in the oven. I've got carrots in honey cooking away in there. And I just want to get my potatoes in to crisp up and turn golden brown. So in the oven, I've had a nice heavy based baking dish with some oil in the bottom. So we're looking at um, canola oil, rice bran oil, veggie oil about a half a centimetre in the bottom of that. And I'm going to bring it out, it's nice and hot, so we're going to pop these cooled drained potatoes into that hot oil. The reason I put them into hot oil out of the oven is because it immediately seals the potatoes up and makes them lovely and crispy instead of it soaking into the potato and making it soggy and greasy. So I'm just really carefully, with my big spoon, going to take them out of the colander where they've drained nice and dry and put them gently into the hot oil so they don't spit. So what you need to do with the potatoes is put them in the oven and leave them alone in there for at least 20 minutes until they really crisp up on the bottom and you can flip them over without them breaking and going mushy. And that way you'll get those beautiful golden roasty potatoes. So our lovely honey sesame carrots are all soft and golden and ready to eat. We're just gonna pop those aside while we wait for the rest of the meal to be ready. So I'm just gonna make a nice little rosemary salt to go with the potatoes. It's really simple. All you need to do is strip a few leaves off the rosemary and you could just as easily use fresh thyme or dried thyme, um, oregano, anything you like really, any beautiful herb. But since I grow this lovely rosemary at home and lots of it, I wanna use that. So I'm gonna use that, a little bit of sea salt, and I'm just going to give it a really rough pounding in a mortar and pestle. You could also put it through a 
food processor. If you've got a, a Nutribullet or a Thermomix or a, a mini food processor handheld one. It'll make this beautiful fragrant green salt. And you need to have the salt ready before the potatoes come out of the oven because potatoes, just like hot chips, they need to be salted while they're still hot, while the oil is still on them. So we're just about ready to serve up. For this beautiful roast dinner, I'm gonna put it all in a lovely dish together and serve it to the table so that people can help themselves. All right, here are the spuds. So I'm just gonna drain them for a moment on some paper towel. So a little bit of paper towel just so that that oil drains off them, but they're still so beautiful and crispy. These are lovely. I'm just gonna pile this up in a big heap of deliciousness, ready for our beautiful Easter lunch. So there it is. It's a traditional lamb leg roast with rosemary and garlic and a few veggies. I hope that you can cook that up and enjoy it over Easter with the people that you love the most. Thank you so much for joining me here at Julie's Place.